the ground and disregard it. Strip you off the ground, show you what heart is. Standing strong and proud of me, and I guess. Let's get it started. It's the hardest. Talk around and disregard it. Strip you off the ground, show you what heart is. Standing strong and proud of me, and I guess. Let's get it started. Yeah, yeah, get your boots ready. We're about to go on a trip where we wrestle nobody settling or calling it quits. You're here for the grip, betcha this stuff is amazing. You're stumbling, welcome to the bump in the apron. Step into it, the hardest part of the ring. Here to bring fun, yeah, in this art he is king. It's the best thing, making sure you don't tap out. Don't go soft with the hardest part cast out. And it's not just another one, it's clear. Off the rest, in this content, none can test. Take the nonsense off the steps. You know it's nothing but Pure gems when it's coming off the chest. Get it? Now it's time to sit and relax. Get your mind blown away. Ain't no skipping this track. Have you paid more attention? No listening gap. Get everything I ever wanted. No giving it back. Yeah. What's up, everybody? The hardest part of the ring. Back at ya. With the apron bump and boy howdy. We got a juicy one today. Ring of Honor, Glory by Honor, 2002. And uh, if that event name sounds familiar to you, well, it's because uh, to this day, they still do Glory by Honor. And they've kind of established it over the years as one of their kind of tentpole events. So, you know, how WWE has Rumble, Survivor Series, SummerSlam, WrestleMania, Glory by Honor, represents one of those marquee events for Ring of Honor. At least now it does. In 2002, <laughs> I mean, maybe they had plans for that. Maybe they didn't. But whatever the case may be, a uh, a big show today, the first ever Glory by Honor. And I guess in hindsight, this really is a big show because while it is kind of bizarre that there's no like world title match on this show, you, we get to see a lot of seeds getting planted for a lot of major happenings for the future of Ring of Honor. And this is all on top of the fact that at this point, we're fresh off of crowning the first ever tag team champions, Christopher Daniels and Donovan Morgan. And we're also fresh off of Xavier beating Loki, turning heel in the process and winning the Ring of Honor Championship. So, lots of stuff happening, but also, like I said, a lot of things kind of getting foreshadowed for the future. For example, Ring of Honor versus CZW. Now, it's a very kind of... Uh, you'll see in one of the first matches that they kind of start to allude to a... Uh, I guess some anim not animosity, but definitely like a difference in philosophies between Ring of Honor and CZW. And that's kind of the foundation for that major, major storyline that would occur, I believe, in 2003. And that is something that made that did so much for both Ring of Honor and CZW. So a major storyline getting basically put into place on this show. I mean, more seeds getting planted. You know, I keep saying that over and over again. But <laughs> it's a fucking farm on this episode because lots more seeds, for example, Homicide. Now, anyone that's familiar with the early history of Ring of Honor knows that Homicide is one of the icons of that company. Some may, see, some may put him on the Mount Rushmore of Ring of Honor. And up to this point in my reviews, he's just been in a tag team. But that, it, it seems to me, judging, judging by what we saw in the show, that that tag team is over. And now that they are, they are going a full force, pushing Homicide as a singles competitor. And he gets a lot of shine on this show. And oh, hey, by the way, on this show, we also get Samoa fucking Joe. <laughs> Samoa Joe versus Low Key. We just recently saw Joe get released from WWE, but don't you worry, folks. I got him. I got him for you. Don't you worry. But, man, Samoa Joe versus Loki. Just, you're picturing a match in your head, and I'm telling you, it's even crazier than what you're picturing if you haven't seen this match before. So, once again, another kind of precursor to a major element 
of Ring of Honor is Samoa Joe. And we get to see his debut here in his beautiful bleached blonde hair. And that, along with Homicide becoming a singles, we got the ROH CZW feud getting underway a little bit. And on top of that, you got the FBI gimmick is on the line. We got Mickey James. We got Paul London damn near killing himself. And we got another Texas death match for you. If you didn't get enough from my uh, ECW Double Tables 95 review, don't worry. We got another one. And I would say it's honestly a little bit better. So lots to get into. And joining me on this epic show is Dan and Sam from the Sweet Chinwag podcast. You can find them on Twitter at Sweet Chinwag and listen to them wherever you listen to podcasts. I believe their Twitter links all of their uh, podcast platforms from there. So go check them out. Really love their show. I love the unique content they put out because, you know, they, they do all sorts of things. They'll do retro reviews like myself, but they'll also do interviews They'll do retrospectives on different wrestlers and companies and, you know, like wrestlers and music, wrestlers and TV. But also, if you haven't already, please check out their Lucha Underground retrospective episode with your boy. Yes, I uh, honored to be on their podcast to talk about some Lucha Underground. Um, I'll, I'll probably I'll link that in the description of this as well, that episode. But go check that was within the last few months. So go check out their podcast and check out all their episodes. Subscribe to them, uh, you know, tickle their nipples, butter their tits and call them Susan or whatever, whatever it is you do in your country and how you um, show adoration, you know, whatever it is you do. But uh, (laughs) loved having them on this show. Super fun show. Let's get right into it. ROH Glory by Honor 2002. With myself and Dan and Sam from the Sweet Chinwag podcast. Yeah, once again, thank you guys for uh, making the time to do this. Yes, yeah, right. Um, I, kn- I know you guys are uh, into a lot of the more obscure, st- not, not obscure, but uh, more independent style wrestling. Mm. Uh, so yeah. I, I th- figured it'd be a good time. I guess in uh, in terms of Ring of Honor, are you guys familiar with, I guess, the, the, the company as a whole or more so this era? Oh gosh, yeah. I I'm pretty I'm pretty well versed in the early days of Ring of Honor for sure. Yeah, I'm I mean I do know this period, but I, I'm more specifically like 05 to like 07 Ring of Honor is like my wheelhouse, right. but I do know this period. Yeah, I'm the exact same. I'm very unfamiliar with the uh the early days um other than a few people that kind of came in um pretty much unfamiliar as far as storylines go and yeah, like when there, there were people titles. on this show that I was like, I know who these people are. I haven't seen them yeah. in ages, but I know who they right, are. Right, right. <laughs> God, I had s- such a like a nostalgia hit when I saw the first match. It was like, oh my God, I've not seen Special K in years. Man, yeah, they <laughs> really just throw you into the deep water with the first match. <laughs> I mean, this 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 one will pop Sam and Sam only. I don't know if they have it in the US, but um, I was there, and the first thing I thought of was like, why are they talking about cereal so much in the first match? <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently, Special K sticks around for a while. I think, right? It's Gosh, yeah, they me. stuck around for a long old time. Just a bunch of rave kids that do drugs. That's their gimmick. That that's money. Apparently, <laughs> in the early two thousands, it was, I guess. Yes, there is something I will bring up as well when we go when we, when we get like proper into it. It's like, dear God, there there is a certain band that people love in the in the early two thousands, isn't there? Right. I mean, I can tell you my my favorite thing, which was one of my favorite things, was from the start of it, which was um, uh, just the. I mean, we'll we'll get to it when we get to the episode, but just the pure energy of the introductory introductory video. <laughs> Oh, don't worry. I have that in my notes. Same. I'm not letting Same. that slide. <laughs> but uh, yeah, just to set the stage for where we are here. So they uh, just crowned the first ever ROH tag team champions in the last show. And we're still pretty fresh off crowning the first ever uh, world champion a few months ago previous to this. Low-key won. But then uh, at the last show, Xavier beat Low-key to become the new Ring of Honor champion. Uh, turning heel in the process and joining the prophecy. The prophecy, by the way, is pretty much what the uh, the main event revolves around. It's a faction yeah. comprised of uh, Christopher Daniels, uh, Xavier, Donovan Morgan, Simply Luscious, and I guess apparently 
Samoa Joe, which was Samoa Joe being to me. paid by the prophecy. <laughs> yeah, and that's really they, they tie a good bow on it at the end of the show. But uh, yeah. but that's basically where we are. Glory by Honor. It's a uh, they're building it as like a a tent pole event for Ring of Honor, which makes yeah, sense considering kind of I believe like it's still around. One right? of Ring of Honor's like big four, I guess. Yes, yes. So um, big show for them. And that brings us to the intro. <laughs> it sounded like um like I needed ecstasy to be listening to it. <laughs> it it oh, had oh. such a raw energy that can only be attained by a combination of techno, new metal, and then your footage constantly cutting to negative. Right. I will say this about RF video. They have upped their production quality since 2002. <laughs> they got there eventually. <laughs> yeah. They were, I swear they were using Windows Movie Maker at <laughs> this time. <laughs> they probably were. That's literally my first thought because they've been doing these. They haven't improved since their first show. And they're about, <laughs> they're almost a year in. And it's like you said, it's like Windows Movie Maker, PowerPoint, whatever it is. It's, uh, <laughs> it's something, but it pretty much, uh, lays out what we're going to see. It's it's weird because it's like a long, drawn-out intro that shows what happens in the show. So it almost kind of like spoils some stuff, but you know, it's... Well, <laughs> there, there, there's, there's, there's two bits of it that I, I particularly love. One, which is that it gives you the run-through of all of the effects, and then it gives you a second run-through of none of the effects over it, just in case the negative is too <laughs> intrusive. Um, and then second of all is just the names appearing in block text. Yeah. Just yeah. because, like, my personal favorite one and... Uh, for, for any listeners who are also uh, NL viewers, where there's just the one where it just pops up and it's got like the whole negative effect of it, it just says Shane. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed that too. It just showed their last names, I guess, for it dramatic just, effect. It just, it just, it just block text over like this negative footage with like pounding music over it. Shane. <laughs> so good. So good. So 2002. If oh, nothing else. so 2002. <laughs> I love it though. But uh, speaking of 2002 indie wrestling, nothing encapsulates it more than this opening match here. So we got a uh, tag team scramble match. Yes. I mean, if there's if there's one thing I can say about the production on this, it's that they totally took every opportunity to remind you that this was a tag team scramble match and what the rules of a tag team scramble match It's, were. it's so unique it to Ring of Honor. Did you know? Did you know it's unique to Ring of Honor? Nobody else is doing it. It's unique to Ring of Honor. You know, one, one person, when one person leaves the ring, another person can just tag themselves in. You know, it's our, it's our, it's our hallmark. <laughs> I give credit to credit where credit's due to Chris Lovey, the commentator, because I feel like every time I always watched Ring of Honor, he was always plugging the fact of the Code of Honor. These are never uh, seen in sports oh, entertainment. They were, they were putting the Code of Honor over gigantic. <laughs> yeah. I mean, to it's... be fair, it makes sense for Ring of Honor, but like, it was like, um. Uh, when we get to a later match, they're just like, they don't abide by the code of honor. Da, 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 da. Um, <laughs> Nobody cares about it other than these two fucking commentators talking um, about it. I, I mean, I don't know if this is a thing that was maybe just unique to me, but it was like, as much as they were putting over like the whole like, oh, this is like real wrestling sports presentation. <laughs> I felt like the, the commentators, like they got ripped from like a baseball game. <laughs> <laughs> they well, they, they've gone kind through of, a few different ones yeah they had this weird kind of i don't want to say lack of energy but it, it, it felt very much like i was just like watching two people like calling an actual sport but like in a, in a weird way <laughs> yeah well i'll say this the first few shows had donnie b and steve carino commentating Yep. And that was the other end of the spectrum. It was like too much. Yeah. So it's like <laughs> me as somebody who's watching all of these in chronological order, it was almost like a breath of fresh air to just have some guys in the background. You don't need to be. I did the one <laughs> yeah, guy. Like, for- like it was nice just having it was like it was nice having people that were literally just calling the action in the ring. <laughs> yeah. They didn't overshadow what was happening in yeah. the ring. And there's kind of, you know, like like I said, backdrop. But uh. <laughs> Lots of people in this first match. So we have uh, Divine Storm, the team of Chris Divine and Quiet Storm, versus SAT, the team of Joel Maximo and Jose Maximo, versus Special K, the team of Dixie and Izzy. And then you have Homicide. Just Homicide. <laughs> <laughs> so the whole story here is that his uh, partner, Boogaloo, 
they're in a team called the Natural Born Sinners. And Boogaloo was taken out at the last show by the Carnage crew. They're really, uh, the commentators are putting it over like this dude got murdered backstage. Uh, <laughs> oh, they are making it seem like the most heinous crime has been committed. And they're like, homicide's out here on his own. His team, his partner can't be here because he got beaten up by the Carnage crew. I'm <laughs> just like, mm-hmm. we're, we're like six minutes into the match. You don't need to say this again. <laughs> <laughs> they're being very vague about it too, but uh, they're pretty much suggesting that Boogaloo's career is over. Yes, yeah. you know, yeah. glazing over it. Like, okay, I guess no more Boogaloo for us. <laughs> Fuck me then, and I no guess. No one ever saw him again. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Homicide here, I guess he's trying to prove himself as a singles guy. Um, he goes on to be one of the, the biggest stars in Ring of Honor history, so I guess this is kind of the uh, the start of that. Yeah. Gosh, yeah. He, comes, he becomes a Ring of Honor icon, uh, which is, yeah. it is crazy considering this is like watching so like humble beginnings for Homicide. Yeah, jumpsuit, the, the mask coming yeah. out. It's all, it's all crazy. <laughs> um, this match, I, 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 I described this match this way. It's indie garbage, but done well. Yeah, oh god, this is very much Ring of Honor of the time. It was yeah. garbage, but done yeah, yeah. very well. <laughs> Oh. It's it, the closest thing I could use to describe it was like vaguely controlled chaos. Yes, <laughs> like it is absolutely. hell, and there's like tons of stuff happening. So like this gives me a, this gives me an aspect to talk about Ring of Honor's production at the time, which mm-hmm. is there's this one moment where I think Homicide and someone else is setting up for this like big spot in the corner. The camera is dead set on them. If you look at the crowd, they're all facing at the opposite corner. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. They're all they're just, they're just not interested at all. They're waiting for like the spot on the other side of the ring to happen before they look over at this one. <laughs> yeah, there's just a lot of shit going on. And like we said, it's a scramble match, as the commentators repeatedly said. So no tags were necessary, to which I ask, why bother even standing on the why apron? Why not just make it a tornado tag match? Yeah. <laughs> so it's yeah. Like, who knows? But um, yeah, some really, um, a lot of, uh, most of this match is really smooth. Actually, I was surprised mm-hmm. given that the people involved, it seemed like it was going to be more uh, sloppy than it was. Not saying that there weren't sloppy aspects to it, mm-hmm. but um, I enjoyed it for the most part. A really good opening match to get the crowd hot with a lot of, you know, just high spots everywhere. Everyone's yeah. diving to the outside. I mean, gotta... like they, they did put over uh, quite a few times where they were like, oh, these guys are mostly known for doing high spots and stuff. But look, they're doing that stuff as well. And Mm-hmm. I think there's that there's that one spot where like every single person in the match did a dive to the outside. <laughs> yes, yes. Before all, before cutting Izzy off, before he finally gets his moment with a with a pretty smooth springboard uh, spaceman plancher. Yeah, to the outside. beautiful, beautiful. That those drugs, man. That'll make kids jump <laughs> and do crazy things. But Sam, like, I don't know what the guy just did. It was like a it was like a jumping corkscrew thing. <laughs> <laughs> commentators were very confused by that yeah. but uh <laughs> great um, call i do have to say about this event as well it's more just a general thing but can i just say for for what Ring of Honor was doing at the time and just the pure aesthetic can you, having your guardrails just be pieces of chain link fence <laughs> yeah they always take a beating like i don't even know why they bother having them at this point they do more yeah. harm than good it has I think. such a <laughs> visceral energy and when we get to a later match I'm gonna i know talk you're talking about, about yeah. too i, I because, know what you're talking about <laughs> like it's just the thing of like they're like oh man we got good thing we have this guardrail around to protect their fans that guardrail ain't doing anything <laughs> they're they're not weighed down at all they're just metal sharp things put up there for aesthetics oh man but Yes, like we said, a lot of dives in this match, a lot of uh, suplexes, a lot of landing on necks in this oh, yeah. match. <laughs> yes. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> I'm a big fan of the Storm Cradle driver myself, more so the setup than anything. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Storm, Cradle, Driver, you know, all that shit, right? And then um, we have a really sloppy Tower of Doom with like all 50, oh, 15 that, guys oh. or whatever. <laughs> I'll God, be honest, dude. when that when that Tower of Doom happened, I, I was concerned for the ropes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Izzy, I think, in, in all intents and purposes, not the only person in this event, well, he just ate shit on that Tower yeah. of oh, Doom. 
and somebody there, landed there, on his there, leg. Was, I, it was I, I brutal. I can't remember who it was exactly, but someone just straight up falls on another person in the Tower of Doom before it even yep. hits the ground. <laughs> yeah. yeah, It just lands brutal. on someone's chest. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, super fun, innovative match, especially for the time. Ultimately, uh, Homicide hits the cop killer onto Dixie, and then uh, he puts Izzy, the other special K, in an STF and makes him tap out. So Homicide overcomes the odds and wins without a partner. Gets put over huge. <laughs> Dude, yeah. And like I said, commentary is really putting over that uh, natural born sinners are no more and homicides now going into singles. And uh, how do they further that? By putting him immediately in a tag match after this. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> we- <laughs> Mat- match concludes, everybody leaves. The homicide's still in the ring, which leads to the backseat boys storming the ring. You guys Hell familiar yeah. with uh, Johnny Cashmere and Trent Acid at all? Oh, dude. Um, like, I mean, again, we, we, it's, in, it's in the exact same time period. I, I talk huge about how much uh, I love 2002 CZW. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so I, I remember Trent Acid super specifically from the, like, of the time, probably one of the best junior heavyweight heavyweights around. Oh gosh, yeah, that agreed on that one. It's a shame they put him in like a six minute match, <laughs> but right. Like I mean, I get. I guess the big thing for this is they're doing the whole like, oh, when uh, Ring of Honor and CZW both do a show in like I think did they say it was specifically Philly or was it just generally Pennsylvania? I'm not sure. They did make a point that this is they like a one-night-only thing. They made a point that they're like, thing. oh, when they're there, they're, they're just going to be doing double headers. So it's like if you came down, you could see a Ring of Honor show and a CZW show at the same time. And they're like, yeah. oh my god, I, this didn't say talent exchange. <laughs> meanwhile, these guys, meanwhile, Trent Acid and um, Johnny Cashford just walk out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no problem. Just tr- trounce. They have music and everything. That's fine. It's all fine. Um. But yeah, I, mean, I personally am not too familiar with CZW. I'm aware of the company and what it like represents. And I, I understand that Ring of Honor and CZW, the whole kind of uh, warfare, that, that's like a big thing for both companies, really, in the yeah. early 2000s. So, so because of the, t- of the time, uh, obviously Ring of Honor was positing itself as like, we are the wrestling promotion for wrestlers and wrestling fans. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, CZW is like obviously in the ultra-violent hardcore area but like i think a thing people forget about czw is just how important the i mean junior heavyweight or cruiserweight division or however you want to call it um right. was to a lot of their early success because mm. you know we're talking guys like uh trent acid uh people like again people like ruckers used to be there sanjay dutt jody fleisch yeah really a, a, a who's who of talent that was working their junior heavyweights division and genuinely uh for any wrestling fan worth going back and watching uh and in terms of czw a lot of it from that time i say a lot of it at, at least maybe half of it isn't even ultra violent stuff it's just really good junior heavyweight wrestling yeah right yeah because when i think of it i think of you know light tubes and you know thumbtacks oh, and all there's, that there's shit. plenty of light tubes i think there's a match from that time which is uh, Trent Acid versus Jody Fleisch for the CCW Junior Heavyweight, and it, had, it takes place outside. And then, like, jo- and then, like, Trent Acid uh, does his um, it's like a Phoenix Splash leg drop, uh, mm-hmm. with like a, a chair or, over Jody Fleisch's head. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Classic. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like you said, a lot of future stars got their start in uh, CCW. Oh, yeah. yeah. That would go on to Ring of Honor and beyond, really. Um, so Trent and uh, Johnny Cashmere are out there. They say that they're the best tag team in the world, and they came to Ring of Honor to fight the best tag teams. And uh, Homicide, still in the ring, says that he'll team with anybody in the back. And who comes out? Steve Carino. Steve Carino? <laughs> Man. I'll say I'll say this about Steve Carino. CM Punk really wanted to look like Steve Carino, didn't he? <laughs> That's who it was. I was trying to put my finger on who he looked like, but that is exactly <laughs> it. I think the thing that I loved about it was that they were like, oh, Steve Carino left because he didn't want to do the commentary anymore, but now he's back and he's, he's in the ring. 
uh, as if like that's the reason he came out. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's already you know dressed up. He's prepared to compete, obviously. So, so we have a tag team match here in prompt two: Homicide and Steve Carino versus the Backseat Boys. Like I mentioned, Johnny Cashmere and Trent Acid. Um, like I said, commentary is making a big deal. This Ring of Honor versus CZW, two different uh, philosophies on wrestling and styles. Um, they start with the code of honor. They shake hands, and then Carino just fucking cheap shots. Yep. Uh, one of the <laughs> yeah. guys, the Ring of Honor guy, is the one that doesn't obey the the code of honor, which is fun. <laughs> and uh, this match, you know, another kind of chaotic tornado style uh, type of tag match here. Yeah. Kind of, uh, it was a weird pacing after there, the last there, match. There's a lot of the commentators saying like, "What rules is this match taking place under?" <laughs> It's just a fucking wrestling match. It's not that <laughs> exactly. Well, because I, I think yeah. the thing for me was they like kept trying to qualify it, and they're like, "Oh, this doesn't seem like a Ring of Honor match. This is like a CZW match. Maybe it's a mix of the two. And I'm like, J- it's just a match that's happening. <laughs> <laughs> We've seen many like this, including the one that literally just happened. Yep. <laughs> um, but the uh, but towards the end, Homicide hits a splash from the top rope. Steve Carino, his partner, shoves him off as Homicide, Homicide attempts to pin, um, which creates a two count because of the delay there. Um, yeah. Some more miscommunication between Homicide and Carino. Uh, Homicide accidentally forearms Carino as Cashmere ducks. Uh, Homicide goes for the cop killer on Cashmere, but uh, Carino just super kicks Homicide. Just fuck you, Homie. This is <laughs> <Yeah>. my time. <laughs> yep. And then the uh, there's literally just a point where just Steve Carina just like yeah you know what I can't be bothered anymore yeah <laughs> he just, he just, it's, yeah. Li- it's literally like in the match it's like he again it's like I've spoken a bunch about uh, how it, in wrestling the concept of accidental just doesn't exist no um, not at all and so it's literally like homicide hits Steve Carino like once after clearly trying to hit Trent Acid and then Steve Carino's like Can't nah be trusted. screw this I'm done yeah. just kicks him <laughs> in the face and then walks out to the back skedaddles and then uh, the backseat boys capitalize with a the commentary calls this the, the T gimmick I don't know if that's actually the name of their move or if that's what they just described um, it as I, but uh, I genuinely cannot remember <laughs> It, whatever it is, it's, it's like a choke slam, but with uh, with the, the opponent's arms, I guess. Yeah. Um, and that gives the CZW team the win here. It's it's definitely it's not a bad match per se, but you can definitely tell that this match is definitely like a teaser for this rivalry between CZW yeah. and yeah, Ring of Honor. Yeah, because like there's there's lots of really cool stuff in here. So everything from like for for me, Homicide basically starting the match with the Raven spot. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. Uh and then doing the drop kick offers, which was nice. Um and like the commentary trying to do what they can to keep everything tied together and at least vaguely sensical. Yeah. Because it's weird that there's like this super chaotic match going on and then the commentators are like, Oh, by the way, like Steve Carino works with a bunch of uh, submission guys, so he probably won't be tapping out soon. Right. Meanwhile, <laughs> Is that like, how it works. Mean, mean, meanwhile, like Steve Carino is in a submission hold, and, and like I think, I think it's um, yeah. So it's uh, Trent Ass and Homicide are just like, like throwing each other across the ring. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, also, for for me as a person who has watched CCW, the commentators making fun of John House was was a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I assume Yakuza. that was a reference to yeah. <laughs> Yakuza. Good shit. Good shit. Um, but after that. We have a uh, six-man or six-person tag match. We have uh, Christian York, Joey Matthews, and Alexis Lurie, a.k.a. Mickey James, versus the team of the Christopher Street Connection, Buffy, Mace, and Allison Danger. (laughs) Let me get out of the way very quickly. The Christopher Street Connection are very of their time, aren't they? (laughs) Oh, very. I think the thing that can tell you they're very of their time is that I was I, I was, I again I haven't seen this in years, so literally there was a point where I was like, oh, this was a thing. Yep. Uh, and so the I feel like the only thing I used to say about this, and given our views on certain things and and who we are as people, uh, the most evident thing about the Christopher Street connection is every single article I could find of them, both of the time and published afterwards, always has. Uh, always has gay in like uh speech marks <laughs> yes right <laughs> well 
Well, uh, they're homosexuals, you understand. Yeah. I po- I popped massively when I saw Alison Danger because I immediately thought of that one very famous clip of Becky Lynch going, Alison Danger, you divvy knacker. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means, but that sounds very insulting. <laughs> it's oh, a yeah. very Irish term. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to try to incorporate that in my daily life and see what happens. <laughs> Basically, you're, you're stupid and you're lazy, I guess, is the, the easiest way of saying it. <laughs> <Yeah>. Love it. <laughs> Love it. Um, do, you guys, uh, do you guys enjoy the Japanese pool boy? <laughs> it's one of those things that, again, very of the time, and I found incredibly stupid, but in a weird way, I was like, you know what? I kind of like it. <laughs> oh, no. You're the reason. You're the reason this was a thing. <laughs> also, this was made for you. It was, so, it was so stupid. It's <laughs> so the unnecessary, entire time, but it's the hilarious. Entire time I was just there, and I was like, there is no reason for them to be here yeah. while this is happening. <laughs> But my god, does it not just make it so pointlessly stupid and yet somehow weirdly better? <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> like I said, like I, for, for me going, obviously I know I'm looking at this in retrospect and seeing the Christopher Street collection and just basically spending the entire time being like, I feel pretty uncomfortable right now. <laughs> well, you're, you're uncomfortable with uh, Buff E hitting a spine buster on uh, Christian York and him pinning him with his dick in his mouth? <laughs> Uh, it was more that it was it was that and uh, it was less that and more them doing the finish <laughs> and then the commentators uh, screaming. He just hit him with the gay buster, <laughs> gay basher. Gay oh, sorry, basher. You got to get it right. Sorry. And this is all that, that's all after the um, I call it the slug. So yeah. it's kind of like the caterpillar, but instead of uh, doing an elbow drop or something, you just uh, s- crawl all over your opponent. Um, <laughs> You know, and then end with your your balls in their face. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there, there was there was an interesting dynamic in this match, which I would I, I imagine people have probably yeah. done since. Although I, again, I probably like to see it in more matches where it's like you have a tag match where there's like one person really wants to beat someone, but they don't want to get in the ring with them. <laughs> yes, <laughs> which yes, I thought that... was like a pretty fun, which like a pretty fun way of going about things, but. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and that, that's how the the finish kind of plays out too. So you have uh, Mickey. I'm gonna call her Mickey James. Mickey it's James is there. Yeah, <laughs> she's uh she's in there. She's already like ahead of her time as far as women's oh, wrestling yeah. goes. In- she's been so cool ever since she started. Yeah, I mean, like the, the the thing about it is that like <laughs> you you look at this match and then in a weird way you could probably make a decent case for for, for her being one of the better workers in this match. <laughs> Even yeah, though she 100%. does very little <laughs> comparatively, right? Yeah, I wouldn't disagree with that at all. Um, but as you said, they hit the gay basher onto Mickey James. That's a sentence I just said. But then, uh, welcome Allison... to the, welcome to two thousand two indie wrestling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but then uh, Allison Danger, who has not done one thing in this match up to this point, makes the tag, gets in the ring, and pins Mickey James. Gets the win for the Christopher Street connection. And uh, yeah, and then after <laughs> what, what popped me after, I don't know why it, made, it tickled me so much, but after the match, so yeah. YMCA is their theme <laughs> yeah. song, right? So the music again, is just playing. Again, off the time. <laughs> I love this so much. Y- York and Matthews, who were on the losing end of this, they beat up the Japanese pool boy with YMCA just playing in the background. <laughs> The cl- the crowd is not making any noise. They are so confused as, as to what's going on here. I mean, like, ob- sad obviously, the hell obviously out of like the point the point out of this is that like there was a moment for me at first where when the Christopher Street connection were coming to the ring, and I was like, "Is that the YMCA?" <laughs> it's very on um, the nose. And then, um, and then it just like there's just this person being beat down while YMCA plays in the background. <laughs> It's like one of those Ugh. random YouTube videos you find at like 1 a.m. It's, it's one like, of those things where if you're like, watching it and a friend walks in, there's just no way you can explain what you're watching. Like, it's like a YMCA, but it's 3 a.m. at a party and someone's being beaten up outside. Yeah. <laughs> and you're in the bathroom. All right. Just normal everyday <laughs> stuff, you know. But yeah, the, 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 the crowd is just like, does not know how to respond to this situation. <laughs> I didn't know how to respond to it, to be honest. So after that, after all those shenanigans, we have uh, the first singles match of the night. 
and with it's possibly uh, the greatest gimmick of all time. <laughs> and that gimmick is on the line. So the yeah. winner earns the rights to the FBI gimmick. <laughs> James Maritato, aka uh, Little Guido Nunzio, versus Tony Mamaluke. Man, I don't I even say, know how to explain <laughs> this. May I just say, great pre-match promo from Maritano. Yes. Like, oh, really, yeah. I know like he did get some bike time when he was in WWE, but God Lord, they should have put oh, more, well, give him no, more promo like, time. I, I, so one of, my, one of my notes about this match is that this is a match between two people who genuinely don't get enough credit for their work. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Because they are genuinely really great workers and they they do get to put it on show here and again yeah. like if, if for people out there who want to go and find it uh you can go and see to- tony mamaluke did a match in czw i really? believe against ruckus hell yeah great match. it's a great match yeah mamaluke is a uh somebody because I, I wasn't a big ecw fan back in the day so i'm not too familiar on that iteration of the fbi Mm. yeah i it's something it's something i came to in retrospect so i'm always looking right. back on it but uh the whole premise here is that james maritato uh he wants to be a, a shooter he wants to be more serious um he wants to leave that comedy gimmick in the background or in the in the rearview mi- mirror and uh tony mamaluke just wants to ride the, the momentum of the fbi um which you know it's weird to think but at this point ecw is still freshly like closed down so it wasn't that long ago yeah. before this yeah um, it probably would have only been a, a couple well, i want to say a, a year it was roughly yeah. a year yeah maybe a little bit more but uh yeah still because even still even fresh. again we, we say it like this but then again what wcw hadn't been closed about the same yeah. time period mm. yeah exactly um so the gimmick is on the line here for the FBI. And it's weird because Maritato's kind of positioned as the baby face here, which is bizarre because you would think the like the fun loving guy would be the uh, the guy that people would cheer for. But I guess that all plays into what Ring of Honor is trying to be. They're trying to be serious. They, yeah, they hate they, they hate sports entertainment. They, they I mean, they love reminding us of that fact. Um, I, I guess the thing about it is that they're trying to paint uh maritato as i guess i guess the good guy in ring of honor terms he's like no i want to put this to rest i'm done with this now i'm something mm-hmm. new meanwhile mama luke's like hey look I, I i liked having this and it's nice to carry it forward yeah again i don't absolutely. necessarily know how that translates over into like <laughs> how to actually make people like them or not because at least as far as i can tell most people like the fbi right yeah, and it's a weird. Also, another element of this is that uh, Maritato goes to WWE very soon after this. Yeah, I don't know if this is his last match. It, it, it seemed, you know, they have a closing segment uh, at the end of the show where they basically like say goodbye, and Tony Mamaluke is like, uh, "Good luck" or whatever. So I don't know if this is his very last show, but I know he goes to WWE in late 2002, which is where we're at here. So. Um, that could be the story. Maybe they, they, the hostility has kind of simmered down. It's more of, you know, like you said, it's kind of just two guys really showing like what they're capable of well, from yeah. a technical standpoint. Because like the thing I like about this is that, and again, this is a thing I, I say wrestling needs to do more, but realistically, it's just kind of major companies that need to do this more. And they are, they a lot of them are getting to it now. For example, Ring yeah. of Honor currently is fantastic for it, but like they 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 keep mentioning the fact that they know each other. And they've worked together, yeah. But mm. you can tell that from the way the match works. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Great, great back and forth with the chain wrestling at the start, um, and and I, I couldn't believe it. Ring psychology. Both of them were trying to isolate a body part. Who would have thought? Who Good lord! Thought? I wanted psychology. more planches myself. I needed at least one Spanish fly in this match. <laughs> well, it, it, it's like again, it's like they're like. Oh, they're people who are mostly known as for doing the high flying stuff, but um, uh, now they're now they're doing more, now they're doing more match stuff since they've gone yeah. to Ring of Honor, and they're like, oh, um, uh, Mama Luke's got a new move that he's like, oh, you have to have a new move because you've been working with someone for so long, right? Mm. And like, Did that, he ever? That, that feels nice to me. That feels good that they're actually like in acknowledgement of it. <laughs> I I remember them saying that. Do you remember? Him breaking out a new move? 
I don't know I what think, was new and what was old for him, honestly. I believe it's the the it's, front chancery submission. Yeah, was that it's the, the, the finish? Front was that it? Submission at the end, but he does also attempt one earlier in the match. Okay, I see. But uh, yeah, like you guys said, a lot of chain wrestling in this match. The majority of this match is technical, back and forth. Uh, the finish comes when, uh, as we just mentioned, Mama Luke gets a superplex from the top rope and rolls right into a guillotine front chancery type of submission, which leads to Maritato tapping out. Tony Mama Luke wins, and I guess now he has the rights to the FBI gimmick. I don't know how that materializes going forward. Um, I, I can't remember, but <laughs> because, because WWE WWE say screw that, we're going to give you the FBI gimmick, Nunzio. Right? Well, that that's the <laughs> hilarious aspect of it because it's this whole thing where Maritato's like, I'm a, I'm serious, I'm a shooter, bro, and then he goes right off to WWE and <laughs> immediately becomes a comedy <laughs> character <laughs> with uh, who was it, Johnny Stamboli and uh, yeah, somebody Chuck else, Palumbo. Chuck Palumbo. Chuck Palumbo. That's it. I it was Chuck. I mean, Palumbo. everyone knows it was. Everyone knows it was Tony Mama Luke and Tracy Smothers that were the better FBI. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, for sure. The ECW FBI hits different. I can't wait. I'm, I'm starting to watch those shows, too. And that's one of the <laughs> things oh, I can't yeah. wait to get no, to. It, it, I've always is, heard about them. It, 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 it is worth it. It is worth it because they, uh, right, they, do, they do have quite a few good things. Um, I can't remember specifically what it is. I think it's from the first ECW One Night Stand. There's a good little match with the uh, the FBI in it on that. I have seen that. I think that's yeah. the extent of the original FBI that I've really yeah. seen. <laughs> um, but yeah, fun stuff there. And then uh, we have a uh, another singles match after that. We have Hikudo Hidaka versus Amazing Red. <laughs> a, oh, dude. It, it's great stuff. Hidaka is somebody that I wasn't familiar with until the last Ring of Honor show that I watched. Which uh, he really impressed me, along with Dick Togo. Yeah. Um, yes. I, I was immediately a fan of uh, Hakuno Matata or whatever his name is. And yeah. then, uh, so there's, you know, this match was, I mean, they're they're building this like a like a dream match. Uh, I don't know if I go that far, but um, I, I was excited for it for sure. Uh, Lots. I mean, of, I see uh, Amazing sad. Red, and I'm just like, yeah, okay, just sign me up already. Exactly. How much do I have to pay? <laughs> this dude has banger after banger. Oh. One thing about this: Did everyone come out to Nookie by Limp Biscuit in 2002? Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, ex- I swear, excuse the- me, Sam. It was 2002, so the answer is yes. Yes, of course. The SAT came out to Nookie, and then the Macy Wicker came out. I was like, oh dear God, they ca- like, he's coming out to Nookie. Look, they <laughs> paid. They paid for the license for one song, so they were going to get their money's worth. <laughs> They didn't pay for any licenses. Know, they didn't pay for the license. <laughs> this is Heyman style. Let's just play the music and see if they exactly. notice. <laughs> this is being sold on a DVD that's going to reach like a couple hundred, a couple thousand people at most. <laughs> and yeah. the worst part is this isn't the last time we hear Lip Biscuit. <laughs> no, it isn't, and that's a problem for you. But it's okay by me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, love, just you know, great counter wrestling and acrobatics uh, from both it's, these guys. It's, um, I, I'm trying to remember who it was that said it, but they're like, Amazing Red by this point should be a millionaire. Absolutely. Yeah. If 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 not just for the like, if if wrestlers were able to like copyright moves, Amazing Red would be like the richest right. wrestler in existence right Such now. Such a pioneer, dude. He's because he recently retired, right? Amazing yeah. Red. Yeah, yeah, such a that dude left such a mark on, oh, on the oh, on the industry. Gosh, yeah. ab- ab- absolutely. So again, like, so f- um, a- a- as I say to people, f- um, you know, he he was doing stuff then that has become commonplace now. He he was doing yep. a lot of stuff before a lot of people. Yeah. Oh gosh, yeah. So this match, funnily enough, fun fact: this match. And the match between Red and uh, AJ in TNA were my first actual introductions to the Amazing Red. Right. And I remember as a kid back in the day, absolutely loving Red. And coming back to this one and watching it now, being a little bit older, <laughs> but yeah. not mo- but not much. No. <laughs> no. Uh, oh, God, he's so good. So good. And I f- it's like, no wonder so many people consider him the reason as to why so many wrestlers nowadays are high flyers. <laughs> Right. I mean, how many code reds do you see nowadays? All the time. <laughs> oh, From yeah. John Cena as well. <laughs> yeah, but, but actually, though, 
it's like it is, his effect is, has gone that far up the ladder. It's, it's crazy. Um, but yeah, this match is great. I mean, there's even, again, more psychology as far as, you know, Red attacking the shoulder yeah. of Hidaka, who had the tape on. You have Hidaka attacking the legs of Amazing Red with various submissions. Um, it was a fun blend of like fast paced, high flying with technical submissions. Uh, really, really awesome match. Uh, ultimately, at the end, uh, Amazing Red counters a power bomb, Billy Kidman style, with a uh, Famouser. Yeah. And then he uh, goes to the top rope and hits the infrared, a move that he almost, I, I see him miss it like all the time, but it was good yeah. to, he, to see him uh, land it. Oh, yeah. Um, Maybe too much. I think he landed like foot first on Hidaka's face. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, no, his his foot straight up hit Hidaka like above the eye. Yeah, I mean it immediately swelled up. It was right insane. on the kisser. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, that gives him the win. Amazing red, and uh, yeah, awesome match. Oh, I mean, like I said, it, it's just it's it's a really good match for showing that kind of. Uh, the balance of pacing you really need for a lot of these kind of matches. Right. Because, like, again, a lot of matches, they, again, I see even now, it's kind of like, bam, 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 everything's going, everything's going. But, like, taking the time to then, like, have it so, like, ah, oh, Hidak is working, working Red's knee and then have yeah. it so that, like, when Red tries to do, you know, the plancha later, he lands a little bit short or, you know, things like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's definitely a departure from what we saw in the opening match where it was just nonstop. Yeah, you know, it's like given, it, you know, yeah. there's a lot more people in that match, but you know, it's like if you have everything going super fast paced all the time, eventually mm-hmm. like stuff just starts to kind of lose the impact. Right. But if you just give it like that, that like 10 seconds to pause and then have something happen, then people generally tend to respond to it a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's all about letting the, the audience digest what they're seeing. Yeah, exactly. For sure. I just love how in my notes for this match, basically every other note I have is just smooth, smooth. God, these guys are so damn smooth, smooth. Right. <laughs> holy right. shit, holy shit. Oh my God, is he dead? Yes. Those are, those right. are my do you, bullets. Do you, want, do you want my notes? Okay. Amazing Red is so good. Blank, blank. Both of them are so good. <laughs> the infrared is so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely messed well together. Um but this next match is what I paid to see. I don't know about you guys. The, <laughs> the ETV television title match. It is the champion, Fast Eddie, versus Don Juan. Can I just say first off, the names are Chef's Kiss. <laughs> <laughs> that's pro wrestling, brother. That, that, I mean, that is great. definitely you've just come straight out of the uh, of the wrestling school kind of name, isn't it? Oh God, man! And so apparently, Fast Eddie is legally blind, which is crazy. Yeah. Um, you wouldn't know it watching him, but uh, that that is, oh, that is impressive for sure. Uh, both these guys are, uh, you know, as you said, fresh out of the uh, TWA Texas Wrestling Academy. Um, Rudy Boy is out there, the head trainer over there. Um, just really a spotlight match for two uh, lesser known guys to yeah, get some. Yeah, it's kind uh, of like a, a transition match. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, it's definitely a by the numbers match of two guys that have just kind of you know gotten out of the, the wrestling school, making yeah. sure they get their best spots in. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. In one in one case during this match for the worse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For it's it's... god awful horrifying moonsault spot. <laughs> yes, the one. Yeah, because. I'm glad you brought that up because that spot almost exactly happens almost every show in this era. Oh, gosh, somebody, yeah. Somebody oh, does an yeah. Asai moonsault to the outside and they land like shin first on the steel barricades out there. Oh, no. Um, it's just... Gosh, every time... I think that was like... A, that is like the staple of Ring of Honor. I'm not breaking legs? Yeah, totally. Oh, yeah. <laughs> breaking your legs on a Sayu Moon Salt. <laughs> That's Ring of Honor. Because, again, like, here, here, here's, here's a random deep cut. But seeing as we're talking, like, I, I say not long after, a couple years after this fact, mm-hmm. uh, I was talking to someone I know about Wrestling Society X. <laughs> oh, boy. There was this eternal habit that every single person that roster has, every time they die off the outside, they just end up smashing their body into the guardrail <laughs> uh. <laughs> all the time. We have 
plenty of that on this show and, too. The worst is still yet to come. And yes. Oh you, gosh. You yeah. have plenty of this. I'm like these like. They're, talk- they're like they're being up this like obviously the fact that this guy being legally blind and I just see him do an acai moonsault to the outside and just smashes his <laughs> at least he has an excuse right the god right I'm like oh no <laughs> the worst one was it was either the first or the second show it was the one where Paul London debuted oh. and he was fa- I, the name escapes escapes me of the guy he was facing but that guy oh no actually no it was Paul London that did the moonsault but the way he landed on the guy. So he yeah. didn't even land on the barricade, but he just broke the guy's leg from that moonsault. But gosh, yeah, he did. Yeah. So even if it goes right, it goes wrong, I guess. Um, <laughs> God, but yeah, that, that was the one, you know, notable spot of this we'll match. Get, we'll get to Paul London later. <laughs> Don't you worry. Don't you worry, folks. Uh, the finish of this ET, ETV television title match uh, comes when Don Juan is climbing to the top rope. Uh, Fast Eddie hits a really, uh, I I couldn't really tell if he got him or not, but it looked like he did a, a springboard Pele kick of sorts, Mm. um, followed by a Spanish fly follow a slam. It's the only way I know how to describe it. Yeah. Really, really impressive looking. And, uh, that gives him the win, I believe. But after that biohazard and Michael Shane storm the ring. Uh, more Texas Wrestling Academy guys. So there's like a whole <laughs> civil war going on between all of those trainees. Basically, the you know the guys that you know want to work and make all the travel and all that, and the guys that don't. So yeah, pretty much. Did um, you know that Michael Shane is related to Shawn Michaels? Guys? I didn't. Is he? Man, I, I wish they would have said it a few more times. I believe I heard that at some point. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> the uh we'll get to it when we get to it but the, the stipulation of his match just cracks me up to no end yes oh the high stakes very high stakes <laughs> damn right um but yeah solid like you said kind of a let up match of sorts kind of an in-between intermission style of match but uh for what it was it was fine it didn't offend me mm. yeah like it it was it was a it was a fine you know hardcore match yeah I, I don't really have any issues with it. It didn't particularly like make me go, oh wow, you know, this is this is amazing. I wanna you know you know, this has yeah. pulled me in or anything, but it's certainly not it's certainly not awful. Yeah. Um Steve yeah, Carino guys... starts bleeding in like the first twenty seconds. <laughs> so uh, yeah, after this match, so uh Rudy Boy comes out and runs off Michael Shane and Biohazard. Steve Carino comes back out with a mic says uh so he says this to rudy boy he says when me and simply luscious are in bed i tell her to call me rudy i was just like okay i, I really guess. didn't want to know that steve <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, it's one of those things that you like you hear it and the only thing you can say is like the only way you can respond is like okay cool yeah, i for guess you. rudy didn't seem uh he seemed pretty indifferent to it to be honest, because <laughs> yeah. like he says it, and I'm, and I'm like, I, I I understand that he's trying to like annoy him by doing that, but really, he's just like, okay, cool, all right, yeah, so we're doing this or like, I'm flattered. <laughs> then uh, yeah, cheers, mate, thanks, beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Rudy Boy grabs the mic and he begins to talk a little bit, and then he just smacks Steve Carino with the mic, and immediately the match is underway. We have a uh, Texas Death Match. It is because uh, they're from Texas. Do you get yes. it, everybody? Um, <laughs> Steve, but even Carino, though Steve Carino's from Canada, we won't talk about that. We don't talk about that. <laughs> no, it's they're all from they're all from Texas. Yeah, don't you know? That's where wrestlers oh, come yeah, from. Texas by way of Canada. Got Texas it. by way of Canada at an event held in Philadelphia. <laughs> That's not out of the way at all. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> it's a quick hop, skip, and a jump away, but. Uh, yeah, Steve Carino versus Rudy Boy Gonzalez, uh, the father of uh, Raquel Gonzalez. It's a fact I learned pretty recently. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. I believe father, right? Or is it uncle? I want to say father. I, I believe father. Somewhere in there they're related. But uh, so the rules of a Texas death match. And it's funny because I just watched one from uh, 1994 ECW. It was, a, it was a Texas death match between Cactus Jack and Sandman. It was a very different match, a very different match. But uh, <laughs> the rules are the same. It's basically a last man standing match. But in order for the count to start, you have to either pin or submit your opponent, 
which is uh, I kind of understand it, but at the same time, it's like, why are we making these guys just lose? Like, because this match starts and Rudy like hits him with a super kick or something, mm. and then Steve Carino gets pinned like within the first minute. Yeah, um, yeah, which is bizarre. But uh, Carino I feel gets like right it's back. It's just up. one of those things that I guess in the right circumstances can make sense, but it's like you have to pin someone before you can start a ten count. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I will say in this match, and I'm comparing this to the ECW match that I just watched. In the ECW match, there were like 25 pinfalls. It was like ridiculous. <laughs> this, this match, there was only two, I believe. Yeah. Right? There was one pinfall and one submission, which I liked that aspect of it. It, it made sense. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But uh, as you mentioned, Carino is pouring blood immediately. Um, brawling on the outside. Rival, his forehead rivals that only of a doodle of the butcher, is what I say about Steve <laughs> Yeah. That, that blonde hair, man. That'll just amplify blood by <laughs> ten times. Uh, but I will say this about Rudy Boy Gonzalez. Obviously, he's uh, past his prime, but uh, he's bumping his ass off in this match. God, yeah, oh, he he's put the Rikishi in cell. Yes, yeah. I, I had that exact note. I didn't see that coming Dude, at all. we love the Rikishi bump. <laughs> And on the hardwood of the basketball court, nonetheless. I oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, but uh, and boy, does he take one hell of a face wash from uh, Karina, which knocks him out of the ring. I've never seen a face yeah. wash <laughs> knock someone out. Of the I think ring. the only time I've ever seen that happen anywhere else was probably in New Japan. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It really, just made Steve Karina look like a beast here, because uh, you know Karina is pretty much dominating most of the match. Uh, mm. And uh, in the ring, Carino locks in the Cobra Clutch onto Rudy Boy Gonzalez. Rudy Boy passes out, and uh, he tries to get up to make the 10 counts, but can't. So Steve Carino wins the match. Um, like I said, I just like that there weren't a ton of pinfalls and submissions. It was pretty much yeah. a, a traditional last man standing match at the end of the yeah, day. It, well, it, it wasn't super crazy. It didn't go on longer than it really needed to. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I think it's only like a seven or eight minute match. Something like that, that yeah. So, but, yeah. Uh, yeah, it kind of packed everything in that he needed to. And I can, I can imagine probably Rudy wasn't in best condition to be doing like something that was like maybe 12, 15 minutes. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it was a, fi- a fine match. A fine match. But overshadowed, but maybe by the, uh, the aftermath. Um, <laughs> so this is uh, where... So Michael Shane and Biohazard, who are both aligned with Steve Carino at this point, they uh, keep berating Rudy Boy. They, uh, you know, Steve Carino locks in the Cobra Clutch again just to rub salt in the wounds. Uh, I guess rub wounds in the wounds. And then uh, <laughs> Paul London comes out oh, with a hilariously tall ladder. Yeah. Unnecessarily <laughs> big. <Yeah. Yes. laughs> he uh, knocks everybody out with it. Everybody's scattering. Paul London sets up the ladder in the corner, kind of at a 45 degree angle. Um, he's in there. He's consoling the Rudy boy, everybody else. All the heels are outside in the aisle way, kind of just regathering themselves. And then fucking Paul London just runs up this ladder, springboards to the outside and lands back first on the steel barricade. Oh, yeah, literally, <laughs> now, here's the thing. My note for this is I... just Paul London breaks his goddamn neck. <laughs> Oh. Now, I said Izzy ain't shit before in the first match. Good lord, no. Paul oh, London Paul ain't Lund- shit and then oh. some. <laughs> Paul London lent, was yeah. just like, uh, <laughs> Paul London was just like, hello, back. I will be seeing you in a couple years. <laughs> <laughs> just not hitting Michael Shade at all. Oh. He hits the guardrail. He hits the chairs. <laughs> he hits everything but them. <laughs> right. <laughs> And he takes, you know, it, it'll, we'll get to it. It's like it's like the second to last match or something. But he takes some per, pretty gnarly bumps in that match too. Oh God, so yeah, like, he did. But like, because like I am, I am a big fan of like the whole using the ladder to springboard like spot. But the thing is, yeah. normally when you do it, you set it up against the ropes, <laughs> not right. against the corner. <laughs> oh, yeah, it took it's... another few years before it got perfected by Shelton Benjamin. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes, absolutely. I think he only hits like one person too, because there's like three people out there and he misses most of them. Oh yeah, yeah. It, it's literally just Paul London being like, "Yeah, I reckon I can do this." 
let me just see what happens here. <laughs> um, <laughs> but that uh, kind of is a precursor to their to their match uh, later in the show. Yeah. Um, I would argue maybe you could have just had this in that match, but who am I? Who am I to say that? Mm. Um, but oof. Speaking of brutality, Ooh. fight without honor match. Low key versus the debuting Samoa Joe. Okay, so can I say one thing about this match just Please. quickly? Which is that going back and looking at this in retrospect of knowing Loki now. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> makes this match so unintentionally funny. <laughs> yeah. And I know it shouldn't be. <laughs> no, yeah. Because guys are not the only one. Because it's the whole thing of like when Loki's there and like he's doing, uh, like, again, because this is when he was doing his whole like world. I mean, he still does it now, the world warrior. Mm-hmm. And like he gets in, and there's like a bit later which we'll get to, but he's just there and he's just like looking at him incredibly serious. And I'm like, no, that's actually Loki, like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's absurd. So Loki, as we all know, notorious for being stiff, uh, both back then and nowadays. Yeah. And uh, you know, prior to this, he's faced off. He's usually facing. Um, I mean, he was the champion, but he's faced a lot of guys that maybe he could take advantage of. Uh, yeah. Maybe newer guys to the business, stuff like that. But here he's facing Joey Samoe, who will take no shit oh, no. from Loki. <laughs> oh, God, he, take, he takes nothing. And then he goes, oh, oh, it's going to be like that now, is it? Yeah, it's, it's, literally, it's literally that case of like, so you have chosen death. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I specifically remember seeing this match just a standalone match several years ago. And mm. I was like, holy shit, what is this company? These guys actually hit each other. Yeah. And um, I was super pumped to see, because I saw this on the card. I was like, yes, daddy, let's go. Exactly. And it was just two guys actually hitting each other for a long time. There's, um, so I guess, you know, quickly the backstory here is that Samoa Joe kind of comes in as a hired assassin for the prophecy that uh, that faction that has all the champions championships right now um kind of the bodyguard for the prophecy i guess so he's yeah. here to, to damage low key who is like the biggest threat to that world title um he just lost it in the previous show so yeah joe and key i mean they're uh <laughs> Lots of ground and pound in the beginning. Mm. It was very like shoot almost MMA oh, yeah. style at the, at the start. But the uh, the ground and pound, the punches, the elbows, the headbutts, yeah. the slaps, they were all landing and landing hard. Yeah. So I think an important thing to say about this is that this, I mean, so first off, uh, Samoa Joe had just come off a stint in zero one. <laughs> Right. <laughs> if you yep. don't know Zero One, uh, they they don't they don't take stuff lightly. No, not at all. Um, and I guess in terms of like the the canon of Japanese wrestling promotions, when it comes to strong style, uh, Zero One's probably your uh, your closest proponent beyond yeah. like peak Enochism New Japan. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. But like. There's one moment in this match where, like, uh, you know, they do the whole like snap mare takedown, and then like Loki kicks Joe in the back, and you just see Joe's face. He's just like, he did not just do that. This dude, <laughs> this his, dude, what his, are you his doing? Ultra instinct. His face just switches and just gets up, and then like the next elbow he throws, you just hear it connect on Loki's chin. Oh, God. And it's just at that moment you're like, ah, oh, no, these guys are probably actually shooting a bit now. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's not that leg slap sound. It's bone hitting bone sound. Because it's, yeah. it's like um, uh, I was talking to uh, some friends of mine uh, who who don't really watch much wrestling outside WWE, and like they you know m- most of that stuff. Um, and they and we were talking to each other, and, and so I showed them the clip of uh, uh, Shibata. <laughs> Oh, yes. And I was like, no, that sound is actually him just punting the guy's arm. <laughs> right. <laughs> Absolutely brutal. But that, that is so the feel that you get from this match. Oh, gosh, yeah. For sure. I mean, he definitely damaged Loki. Yeah, I mean, there bruises immediately. And there were... 
kick, you know, every, so someone would go for a pinfall and they would kick out at one. Yeah. So it was that further, just like, fuck you kind of deal to them. Uh, like I said, you know, ground and pound, they, they stand back up, more stiff strikes, uh, slows down a bit in the middle when they're like kind of trading submissions, but like, come on, they, they're taking a break from beating the holy hell out of each other. Yeah. Um, they, uh, they, at some point, like getting towards the end, they uh, stare each other down and they remove all their pads. Yeah. So they, they, they pull down their knee pads, their elbow pads, they take the tape off and they uh, just go back at it, just hitting each other really hard again, back and forth with strikes. Ultimately, I, I, I dug the finish kind of. Low yeah. key yeah. is just hitting Joe with a barrage of strikes, just one after kicks, punches, elbows, everything. Cole, he was not holding back on those Kawada kicks. No, yeah. To Joe, right, right on the button on Joe's foot. Uh, well, I, was I mean, like, it, he also Oof. hit about like 17 of them. <laughs> yes. Yes. Like each time he'd go back for more. I mean, my one of my favorites was just the, the uh, like the slap spot. Yeah. Where they just keep going <laughs> yeah. back to it and then just each time they're just ramping them up even more. Yeah, you see the sweat just fly off their faces. It is... It's fun to watch. I can't imagine it's fun to be a part of, but uh, maybe it was. <laughs> Knowing these guys, it probably was, to be honest. Probably. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, so Loki just hits a lot of combinations. Like you said, the Kawada kicks, and then he hits a big overhand right. Um, and then Joe just kind of crumples, and Loki is able to pin him. One, two, three. Loki gets the win here over the debuting Samoa Joe, but yeah. even in defeat, Joe is immediately a star here. Oh no! Gosh, like yeah, if yeah. you're gonna put some like putting someone over in a loss, this is like a great way to do it and huge because yeah. like they again throughout the match they make a point of like no one's lasted this long in the ring with Loki, right? And like no one's taken no one's taken Loki this far, and it's like one of my favorite spots in the match is uh, again I, I'm on record saying this: Samoa Joe's German suplexes are a thing of beauty. Gosh, right, yeah. yeah. But there is one he hits in this match where he hits that clean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's just like, they're like, oh, man, no one's gone you know, this far toe-to-toe with Loki. Meanwhile, Samoa Joe's just, like, beating the crap out of him. He's just, like, ground and pounding with elbows. <laughs> yeah, humbling him for sure, I think, after oh, this match. Oh, absolutely. I hope. <laughs> no, I would think. <laughs> A great line from Chris Lovey here with, uh, uh, with hindsight, where he says, I think we've got a keeper here in Ring of Honor with Samoa Joe. Oh, <laughs> Gee, do you think? You knew. <laughs> yeah. I mean, God. again, one of uh, one of the pre uh, early show, one of my favorite Samoa Joe spots, which is the power bomb into the STF. Mm. Right. Uh, I mean, again, I'm, I'm personally more of a power bomb into Boston Crab guy, but like. Again, it looks great, and and like credit to credit to Loki, he he sells it like a champion. Oh yeah, he was contorting like a pretzel throughout this entire match with all the <laughs> submissions that Joe was putting him in. Uh, yeah, so both guys definitely uh, a great show from from these guys, absolutely. And as always, as I always say as well, small motion kickouts are the best. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Um, then after the match. They shake hands and they hold up. I guess Joe has like a banner for zero one. Yeah, it's one. like a banner or a towel with zero one on it. I can't remember which yeah. one it was. And uh, it was low key a part of that as well. He did. I think. I think he, he made just an appearance off there. of a tour. Yeah. Okay. I believe at that time he just came off a tour with. Yeah, zero I think one. I think he made an appearance there, but I don't think he stayed there for that long. <laughs> I know he's fresh off a of tour in Japan. I'm not sure exactly where yeah. in Japan, but uh, yeah. So they both hold up. The banner for zero one, kind of a, a a sign of solidarity between these two, which is uh, notable because Samoa Joe is allegedly a part of the prophecy. But the whole gimmick with the prophecy is they did they don't shake hands, they don't show respect to their opponents, um, and it gets further convoluted later in the show too with all this. <laughs> but uh, we'll get to that when we get to it. But um, yes, yeah, so after that match, man, I mean, I feel like the crap. Like, what else can you see from a wrestling show? honestly it's almost like the crowd was kind of spent <laughs> after this i mean how could they yeah. not be well yeah it's kind of like you've just seen like i, I mean i guess in in ring of honor terms like what what ring of wants what's present as like the match yeah absolutely i'm surprised it wasn't the main event but then again maybe 
Ring of Honor didn't know what they had. Well, I mean, at I, the I time. Mean, yeah, there's probably an element of that. I mean, I feel like it's, it's a pertinent point to say that this show is, what, three hours long and has, what, 14 matches on the card? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I mean to be fair, like most of them don't go longer than eight minutes, but mm-hmm. it's a lot of matches, a lot of matches. Um, and it, this match was kind of positioned in the middle, so it could have been an intermission, like last before intermission or first after intermission, one yeah. of those deals. Mm-hmm. Um, but man, we have a barn burner after. You thought that was some good shit? Oh man! Wait like... till you get this. Prince Nana versus Elax. You guys big Elax fans? Uh, See, I feel like... the for... only person I found annoying in Special K. <laughs> uh, I think the most pressing thing about this was that uh, on re-watching it, I didn't even realize that this happened. Hey, if you blinked, you would have missed it. Oh, I'm God, yes. <laughs> I genuinely a, uh... thought it was just, like, promotional for, like, the next event. <laughs> nope. It, uh... <laughs> The tone of the room watching it, it felt like it was almost like a uh, like a dark match that, I don't know, just had that kind of atmosphere. It was very quick. I mean, it was maybe a minute. Mm. Um, All I'm saying is, personally, I would have preferred to have seen the dark match that came after this than this. Yeah. What was that again? Ex- oh. I'll have you know, it was ICP versus the Outcast Killers. <laughs> like a legit ICP? Yes. <laughs> legit ICP. Legitimately ICP. <laughs> What the fuck? Why is that not on the DVD? That's why I mean. Because, <laughs> because and I'll, 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 I know why, because I went out and actually saw this uh, for the purpose of this. The crowd absolutely sandbagged this match yeah. because oh, no. of ICP. They were having none. They did not want <laughs> of the ICP insane either. Cloud posse. None of the sports entertainment shit. Or however <laughs> Philadelphians talk, you know. The pre- the, the, <laughs> like, the... I just want to. I want to be at. I want to be a fly on the wall at the meeting where they're thinking about Ring of Honor and they're like, "We are a serious wrestling promotion." They go, "Let's get ICP." Yeah, a little ICP, <laughs> a little Christopher Street connection, rubbing their genitals on people, Japanese pool boy. You know, wrestling, pure pro <laughs> but, wrestling. Yeah, no, this whole like Prince Prince Nana versus Elax thing, like I genuinely missed it. Went back. I'm, I'm gonna say like, this. Oh, did I miss like something that was happening in the show? Is this like a promotional for like the next <laughs> Ring of Honor event? I go back to it, I'm like, oh, that was a match. <laughs> <laughs> I, I Prince Nana is a guilty pleasure of mine. I'm just gonna say that. I don't know what yeah. it is. Yeah, I enjoy everything fair. he does. Um, but <laughs> it was like, why is this happening? So Nana pretty much just shit cans Elax in like 60 seconds. Um, I particularly liked when Nana was chopping Elax, and Elax turned into Mickey Mouse. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> He'd be go, <laughs> and then uh, is uh, then Nana hits Elax with uh, some sort of slam, hits him with a running hip attack in the corner, uh, and then he puts. It's like he puts on a loaded headband. Yeah, he puts on like I. I mean, I said I. I put it down as he puts on like some kind of crown, and uh-huh. then like headbutts him. But yeah, the ref doesn't care. I don't know. Yeah, the if ref was... is just like, okay, cool. Well, whatever. Go off. Get this I guess over I, with. I guess there was some reason why he can't stop it. I don't know. Least, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, but uh, Nana hits an elevated DDT onto Elax for the quick win. And then uh, if you're like, man, couldn't get any more ridiculous than that. Well, <laughs> wait a second there, chap. So Dunn and Marcos come out, who are basically the. Uh, the jobbers of Ring of Honor at this point. They say that they're the top tag team in ROH. And this is when... So this this gentleman here, he doesn't have a name yet, but he's been described as a big Rastafarian-looking fellow. He is a, a tall black man with a black suit, glasses, comes out from the crowd, gives uh, you know uh, the Dunn and Marcos both choke slams, or he gives one guy a choke slam, and he gives the other guy like a big ending kind of looking move. Yeah. And then he just fades back into the crowd. <laughs> and, 20, and nearly 20 years later, AJ Styles thought, I could, I could do with one of those guys as a tag partner. <laughs> he just goes in there, does the moves, and is like, my work here is done. I will be seeing you all later. <laughs> Paycheck, please. Um, <laughs> lots of nonsense there. I mean, you guys have anything else on that? Basically, my notes is, yeah, dot, 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 this was a match. Moving on. Right. <laughs> it happened. Like, that's all I can say. Oh, man. But after that, 
We have the ROH champion in action, but it's a non-title match. So we have Xavier, the new champion, versus Jay Briscoe. Um, Man, does Jay look young? It, it's, it's funny seeing Jay Briscoe here because the only thing I remember of the Briscoe is, I mean, oh, CZW 2002 when they had to wear masks. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, God, Jay. <laughs> yeah. Jay Briscoe is a guy. He's impressed me at what I've seen from him in these early days, uh, especially his match with his brother. Um, oh, gosh, yeah. In the summer of 2002. That, that was one of the best matches I've seen so far in my rewatch. Yeah, I mean, consider, consider this as much of a cutting indictment on uh, who Ring of Honor chose, but uh, I genuinely forgot Xavier was ever Ring of Honor champion. So that is the <laughs> only fact I knew about him before. Yeah watching these i knew he was champion i didn't know when he became champion i didn't know the circumstance i knew he was the I second mean, champion I, I don't i don't know where you guys necessarily sit on sit on the line of like this opinion but the whole thing of like if you have a champion you probably be main eventing <laughs> you would think yeah. right uh, or at you least be like near it meanwhile they're on in like match a after a squash <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and like it's not even inter- it's not the middle, so it's not an, an intermission main event. It's uh, it's not kicking off the second. No, it's just thrown in there, it's, like it's roughly just, around the two hour mark. There. But I mean, I mean, huge for Jay Briscoe. <laughs> yeah, like absolutely. they they make it clear that they see a hell of a lot of stock in him, and uh, rightly so. Yeah, yeah, and you know, Jay came in. He kind of went on a losing streak from the beginning Mm. losing every match that he was in but uh last the last show he beat amazing red in a great match and yeah that was his first win and that basically uh kind of turned the momentum around and jay cut a promo at the last show saying that he's not going to lose anymore in ring of honor so that's kind of uh continuing that streak so um (laughs) the match itself though i mean it was I don't know. I mean, it felt like a WWE style match, for lack of a better yeah. term. Yeah, I mean, credit where credit's due to Xavier. Like, he does have, he did have a nice repertoire. He was quite smooth and had, you know, quite good chain wrestling uh, segments there with Jay. I, I would say for he, he's underappreciated in the fact that everyone doesn't remember him because I think he was just as you as right. you guys said was booked in the middle of the card when he was Ring of Honor champion. <laughs> I, d- I don't know what it was. I, I think just something about him or maybe the presentation around him just kind of made him blend into the background. I mean, even inside the prophecy, right. the main person in it was Christopher Daniels. Yeah. Yeah. So he... a lot of people, wasn't it him or was it him or is it Sonny Siaki that people compared to The Rock? That was Sonny Siaki. Look. Sonny yeah. Siaki yeah. was the one everyone compared to like Rock V2. But you could tell that Xavier kind of has that comparison. Oh, <laughs> so, like, oh abso- for sure, absolutely. Yeah. But yeah, it, it, again, I, I don't think I don't necessarily know that it's any fault of his own. <laughs> he, no, just kind of, he just kind he just kind of like ended up always just. I mean, to 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 use my London parlance, uh, he was kind of end up being a side man. Right. Yeah. To everything, <laughs> he, he was he was just like they gave him the title and they're like, okay, but by the way, uh, you're in a non-title match. Uh, uh, like the eighth match of the card and also christopher daniels is main eventing <laughs> right yeah that goes back to i don't know it's a weird decision as far as like the match order goes but um yeah xavier he he had a good look like he looked like oh, a absolutely. star and i think he definitely did. that's kind of I, I like that aspect of him being in the prophecy because the prophecy kind of almost represents a sports entertainment kind of faction like yeah. th- that's what they that's what their principles are yeah and xavier fits into that very well because he see, looks like a guy you would see on wwe he's just you know good looking jacked up dude um but not a lot of defining features to him i guess mm. and in the ring he wasn't anything you know i wouldn't put him in the top 15 of the people we've oh, gosh no, you know no, what i mean no. so it's it's bizarre to see him win the title although maybe that's kind of their way of maybe bumping him up a little bit giving him something mm. to run with um, but ultimately, it didn't really pan out for him, and he kind of just got lost in the shuffle, with especially with like Samoa Joe coming in, and you have CM Punk coming in shortly after, and then we're off to the races. But um, yeah, the match itself was fine. Um, the uh, Xavier hits a really impressive. Uh, he does like the Chris Jericho multiple power bomb spot. Oh gosh, yeah. Um, 
Jay counters the second one, the second power bomb, and hits Xavier with the J Driller for the win. Uh, in the words of Kenny Omega, I think I would take that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we're kind of talking shit about Xavier a little bit, but he he took that like a champ. He took it like a champ, so beautifully. Yeah, as good as you can take it. So Jay wins, but then Christopher Daniels and Samoa Joe, the other members of the Prophecy, come out to attack attack Jay. Um, Xavier hits a 450 on a Jay Briscoe. Daniels makes the the fake three-count little deal there. Um, But then Loki and Doug Williams come out to make the save a little late on the save, but they come out nonetheless. (laughs) You could have got just after he's been hit with the 450. (laughs) Yeah. Could have, could have helped him as he was doing, as they were doing the spirit squad spot guy. (laughs) Just winking each other off backstage. Where were you guys? (laughs) They're they're just there Uh, and they're just like, Oh wait, okay. We got to, we, we've got to do something now. I, again, I don't, I don't want to make it sound like I'm ragging on the show too much. But like there were a couple of cases where it felt like things were miscued. Because like yeah. I don't, I mean, again, I'm going back to like the first match here. Uh, I don't know if you guys caught it during that first match, but there's just a moment where just homicide just breaks up the pin for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then you just see. I think I think it's Izzy. Like eventually, like gets into the ring and then like goes to do the stomp to break it up, but the ref would have already counted a three by that point. So homicide's like, I guess I've got to react to it. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I, so I just on. get this image that they were just like oh wait we're out now okay now we've got to go meanwhile Jay Briscoe's being hit with a 450 <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's another thing too I kind of alluded to this earlier because we remember that Loki and Samoa Joe they shook hands after their match they they held up the 0-1 banner and solidarity but now they're back at each other's throats again because we have, yeah. you know, Joe is with the mm-hmm. prophecy and then Key comes out to make the save. So now I guess they're not cool anymore. Who knows? But I guess, you know, Joe really is just a hired gun. So he really mm-hmm. has no affiliation, you know, from a personal aspect hey, look, of the as long prophecy, as he gets I guess. Paid, he has no issue. I guess. I guess. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so fine little match there, I suppose. But after that, we have the we have a Philadelphia street fight. It's a street fight. Not only is it a street fight, but it's in Philadelphia. So we have the Carnage Crew, the team of DeVito and Loke, versus Da Hit Squad, the team of Mafia and Monster Mac. Uh, two of the, uh, the the more built-up tag teams in Ring of Honor right now. Uh, mm-hmm. The backstory here is that Carnage Crew took out the Hit Squad uh, the previous show. So the previous show, they had a one-night tournament to crown the first-ever tag team champions. The Carnage crew were not involved in the tournament, so they took it out on the hit squad by attacking them in their entrances, so they never got factored into the tournament. Um, so that's basically uh, why they are at odds and why they are having a street fight here. Oh, okay, though, right? There's something I need to address with this match. I've been please, holding on please. to it till we got here, right? <laughs> so they do the whole thing where I, be- I believe... Is it the Carnage crew that come out first? They're, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yes. they come out first, right? So then we have um, the Hit Squad, right? The Hit Squad. The Hit Squad. D A. Important point <laughs> yep. to make, right? They're down with the kids, spell the Z. For shizzle. Um, okay, <laughs> so they they the Carnage Crew are in the ring first, and they're looking over at the entrance way. Now. <laughs> <laughs> When they make their entrance, they're like, oh my god, it's this crazy sneak attack. Meanwhile, they're just fucking throwing chain link fence around trying to move out the way. I mean, all this noise. I'm going to tell you this. The match of the night was the Hit Squad versus the Barricade. Absolutely. Yes. (laughs) And they're they're doing this whole thing. They're like, oh, where where are they? They're not coming through the entrance way. Meanwhile, you're just hitting... I'd say a brute force will never ever defeat Ziploc ties. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so bad for the Carnage crew because they have to be standing looking the other way at the entrance way. Meanwhile, they're trying to get through and eventually they get in and then they're like, oh, wait, we have to attack them now. So it's like this, they get into the ring, pause, then do it. <laughs> right. <laughs> and the hit squad, they're out there trying to look like badasses. You know, you can't tell me where I come out. We're just going to kick down the doors and then they kick it and then the doors don't go down. And then there's oh 
so nerds and they just kind of walk over the fence awkwardly and then yeah, like you said carnage crew is looking the other way for a, a hilarious amount of time <laughs> um this match here it's a lot of fighting in the crowd it's um you know i'm gonna throw you over here and punch you sometimes uh here's here's a here's a chair i don't even know if there are steel chairs i think they're like plastic chairs uh they, yeah. they do the they do the horrifying i'm going to irish with you and you have to fall into the chair spot oh yes devastating Ooh. devastating <laughs> My body recoils every time I see it. Oh, man. I oofed quite a lot when I saw unprotected chair shots to Mafia, and I was like, oh. oh yeah, there's some big mm. old chair shots in this match. <laughs> Lots of them. Chair shots all around. But I popped huge around. for the water bottle spot. I yeah. always like a good water bottle spot. CTE, you've never heard of her. <laughs> <laughs> what was the water bottle spot? Remind me. Uh, I believe it might have been when Loke uh, just took a plastic water bottle to hit uh monster back over the head <laughs> now was it a full water bottle or an empty water bottle half, makes a difference. Yeah, like half, half water full, i think oh so that Dunk. has that has some recoil to it probably so that probably exactly. does a good amount of damage had, to, had some force yeah yeah to be fair <laughs> the ph level of that water that might be that might do some damage but uh so they work their way <laughs> the whole match is pretty much outside of the ring it's false count oh, anywhere <laughs> and uh they work their way to this little like elevated stage type of deal uh, they try to do the spot where um, DeVito, or sorry, Loke is laid out on a, a setup table, and they're going to do the whole Dudley Boys spot where they powerbomb the other guy through the other guy who's laying on the table. Um, I believe they did it a few shows ago to them, so it's kind of a, uh, yeah. they're kind of calling back to that. But uh, DeVito fights out, Loke fights his way off the table, and then DeVito gives a pile driver to Mafia off of the stage, through the table, onto the hardwood floor, the basketball Dude, court that, floor. That's that, that's that rhino spot. Yes, yeah, yes. <laughs> Absolutely Good call. Good call. love that. <laughs> <laughs> Looked devastating. How can we make this power driver worse? By doing it from height. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but obviously... That's what gives them the win. So Carnage Crew wins, and they uh, spend a good amount of time kind of uh, looking at Mafia, tending to him. Don't know uh, what happens with him. Maybe he, uh, maybe this killed him. Who knows? But uh, yeah. And they never saw Mafia <laughs> again. <laughs> he was taken to a local medical facility, okay? We know how this oh, goes. Oh, no. <laughs> In a box-like structure, but I digress. <laughs> he had uh, you know, contusions on his brock brock tracheal you know all the stupid injuries they have <laughs> um but yeah lots of chaos in this match you guys have anything else yeah very rough and ready match reminded me a hell of a lot of like the the latter day ecw for sure yes. yeah pretty um, much it, it's just kind, again it's just kind of one of those chaotic tag matches that seems weirdly unfitting for ring of honor <laughs> <laughs> I right. feel a bit that the hit squad reminded me a hell of a lot of public enemy. That is true. And not, and for, and not for the good reasons. As I say, not for a good reason, <laughs> but like it is true, yes. <laughs> they're more of like a, uh, to me, they're more of like a three minute warning kind of deal. Yeah. Maybe somewhere in between. Maybe a blend. <clears throat> if you have a quadruple baby between all four of those those gents, that's probably what you get. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, so yeah, the Carnage Crew wins. And that brings us to, I believe, the co main event. A uh, three-way elimination match. Michael Shane versus Spanky, a.k.a. Brian Kendrick, versus Paul London. So, uh, welcome we've back already to seen the, Shane in London. Yeah, well, Welcome back to the Paul London tries to destroy his neck show. Oh, yes, because the, the second act Again, of that show. Again, literally two seconds into the match, Paul London's like, hmm, I will simply collapse my neck. Yeah. <laughs> he neck, but he basically just, neck bumps himself. <laughs> yep. To be fair, the 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 stipulation at hand, I think it's worth breaking your neck for. <laughs> oh, of course, absolutely. absolutely. Cuz uh of course, you know all three of these guys once again all Texas Wrestling Academy guys all have that tie in. Uh but the winner of this match gets the name of the showstopper. Because did you know Michael Shane? <laughs> Mike was a related. <laughs> Again, I never would have known. Never. 
ever, ever. Oh, gosh. Oh, oh I'm talking about Gaucher. God damn it. Limp Biscuit again? <laughs> yes, more Limp Biscuit. <laughs> Are you telling kind of me wrestling shows can't be improved by the presence of Limp Biscuit? All right, I'll, I'll admit, like being at like 2001, 2002, let, let's be honest, Limp Biscuit was synonymous with pro wrestling at this point. It was, uh, yeah, for sure. And if it's not Limp Biscuit in this show, it's you know Japanese pop music or uh... no, that's it. It's those two things. Yeah, that, yeah that, that 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 is it. <laughs> it's basically wrestling in the 2000s had an it, like an unbreakable tie to new metal. Yes. Yes. Which and now I don't I'm mind. looking back at it, I'm thinking like, was I only ever into new metal as much as I was because of wrestling? Possibly. <laughs> but that's a question <laughs> yeah. I'll answer for myself at another time and not here. Yeah. Could definitely influence you for sure. Um, so yeah, tr- triple threat elimination, uh, both London and Kendrick are kind of on the same page. They both hate Michael Shane. So we get a precursor to uh, Lundrick from uh, SmackDown in 2006 here. Uh, they double team Michael Shane in the beginning. Shane kind of slides. He scoots himself out of the ring. And then uh, London and Spanky go at it. Um, <laughs> Paul London, God bless this man. He is <laughs> hell-bent on hitting this moonsault dropkick. God. Like, he, <laughs> he, he is there, and it's like, like the drop salt is my thing, and I will hit it, so help me God. <laughs> and God, does he try? Like I I said, in the first two seconds, he goes for it and then almost head bumps himself. (laughs) Uh, He he, he goes for it once and he kind of just bails out of it. It's really just a a regular looking awkward drop kick. Goes for it a second time and he's like, God damn it. I will paralyze myself before I I fuck up this drop kick again. And uh, almost does. Lands right on his head and neck. And... uh, (laughs) It's almost like between that and the spot earlier with him landing on the barricade from that ladder spot, it's like it's, he's almost like out of it at this point. It's like he's Gosh, definitely yeah. uh, this match had more of like a slower pace than I expected going into it. But maybe those injuries kind of play into it. Um, hmm. And, you know, uh, but towards the end, it, there's a lot of selling. There's like one period in this match in the middle where people are like they're kind of on the outside and they're all like selling. It doesn't feel like anything happened that warrants the selling at that point, but it just seemed kind of like plotting in the middle. Um, mm. But the first elimination comes when uh Spanky hits the sliced bread onto Paul London. Michael hey, uh, Shane super kicks Spanky and gets the cheap pin on London from the, was, the work uh, that Spanky did. It, at least in my mind from how it looked, it was a pretty scuffed sliced bread. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now I feel like, like London was quite notorious at this time for not landing the drop salt and kind of being a bit botchy at this time. So it's amazing to know like a few years later how effortless he was able to pull off the drop yeah. salt. Yeah, I mean, in, in his WWE days, sometimes it looked like he could do two rotations of it. Like he, Gosh, he yeah. got it down. <laughs> yeah, it, it's kind of, I mean, again, like I, I say about like uh, well, Spanky as he was then, or mm-hmm. of course, <laughs> or Brian Kendrick, or the Brian Kendrick, depending on who you are. Um, and like it's hard to dis- it's kind of hard to describe how he was doing the sliced bread, but he was kind of like running to this, he was like running at an angle and almost like yeah. doing a flat spin to do it. Meanwhile, right. he gets in, when we get to like the WWE period of him being there, he's just straight up doing basically a backflip. Mm hmm. I know there's even yeah. a point where he might have even been able to like land on his feet afterwards from it. Yeah. So it's cr- it's kind of crazy to see like back here and then see him like do it, but it look a bit scuffed to like where he got to then and like Paul London the same. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And that's that's another one of those moves that people nowadays you see that move all the time, uh, slice bread, your newy, whatever you want to call it. Um, but uh, towards the end. So it's you know Paul London's out. So now it's just Michael Shane versus Spanky. Uh, it's pretty methodical for a bit, but at the end it picks up when uh, Spanky goes for the sliced bread again onto Michael Shane. Shane is able to counter it, hits the super kick because I don't know if you guys knew this, but his cousin is Shawn Michaels. 
Yeah. Again, so, like I never would have known unless the commentators had like wonderfully I, reminded me because I wasn't sure. Yes. I thought maybe yes, they were. Talking, I, I thought maybe they were saying Paul London was Shawn Michaels' cousin. No, no, it's Michael Shane. Michael oh, sorry, Shane is sorry, his Michael cousin. Michael Shane, sorry. A literal quote from the commentators when Shane goes for an elbow drop the first time. Ah, the elbow favored by Shawn Michaels. Yes. <laughs> it's like it's so on the nose because okay, he hits a super kick, fine. That's one of Shawn Michaels' moves. But he literally takes the other Shawn Michaels move with the elbow drop from the top rope. And uh, that gives Michael Shane the win. And Michael Shane now owns the name of the showstopper because, remember, he is Shawn Michaels' cousin. So <laughs> he grabs the mic. And as soon as he starts talking, crowd's chanting, shut the fuck up. At, like. <laughs> Say what you want about Michael Shane. The dude has great heat at this point in the company. Yeah, he um, he kind of stands out because he's not he, his style. While you know is a bit more slow and methodical, it definitely it's different than what a lot of guys are doing in Ring of Honor. Um, oh gosh, yeah. So in that aspect, he stands out, which I like, and it, it, like I said, great heat for him. Um, but basically, he says now that he has the showstopper name, now he can get rid of it. Says uh, the name is God. You know, the, the audio isn't that great <laughs> in these early <laughs> Ring of Honor shows. So I only caught a bit of what he said, but he's basically saying that uh, he doesn't need the showstopper. He doesn't need the uh, the the backdrop of or the foundation of Shawn Michaels being his cousin. He doesn't need all that. Right. He doesn't need it. Nobody's ever going to mention it again. He, do- he doesn't need it. But just to make it clear that make that point clear, we mentioned it 20 times during this match. Yeah, <laughs> but that's it. <laughs> Never I- again. And may I add, I don't think he changed his name to Matt Bentley until at least 2006. So yeah. <laughs> he was really yeah, no, holding like on to that he, Michael Shane name for a while. Yeah, because uh, I think not long after this, he went to TNA, didn't he? Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's funny. I literally I did a review of uh, TNA Hard Justice 2005, and this was like in the summer of 2005. And boy, howdy, is he just Shawn Michaels' cousin again? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Only this time he has a valet. <laughs> ah, yes. Ah, uh, yes. Uh. Um, I I wonder if there's another well-known wrestler that he may or may not have been related to, who may or may not have also been known for having that at one point. We don't know. <laughs> we'll we'll just have to tune in next time to find out, folks. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, it was it was a fine match. I mean, I think I think the crowd is still kind of reeling from that low-key Samoa Joe match. Yeah. Um, and uh, again, you said it, it's it's a three hour show for us, but you know, for the people in attendance, who knows how long they've been there? It's a it's a hot uh, venue, whatever the mm. recreational center, whatever they're in. They 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 say that it's a hundred degrees in there. Maybe it they could be exaggerating a bit, but you, you see fans during the show kind of fanning themselves and all sweaty and stuff. So it's definitely hot in there. Whatever it Let, is. Let's yeah. just say like <laughs> some of the wrestlers uh, after their matches were. Uh... <laughs> Looking a bit shiny. <laughs> yes, very moist, very moist indeed. I wouldn't um, want to. I wouldn't want to be the person that had to clean Homicide's jumpsuit afterwards. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, anything else on that triple threat match there? Uh, it's a good. It was a good freeway um, from the, from the starlets of the Texas Wrestling Academy. If you yeah. wanted to have like a good advertise advertisement for the Texas Wrestling Academy, I'd say put this show on. Except maybe take out the bits where Paul London's landing on his neck. Yeah, nah, I mean, keep that like, in. Like like the uh, like the earlier matches, just kind of a, a good uh, a good junior heavyweight showcase, really. Yeah, and especially, high especially when you consider where kind of where these guys were at the point in their career as well. Yeah, mm. yeah. You, like, like we said, Michael Shane would move on to TNA and have a, a decent amount of success there, and then obviously you know Brian Kendrick, Paul London have a good amount of success in WWE as well. So uh, yeah, good little precursor to uh, the rest of this decade. And uh, oh, I, I can't. Uh, I'd be reminiscent if I didn't mention uh, Michael Shane's quote to end this promo. To all, I say, eat me. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, why? Unnecessary. Just (laughs) just eat me. Nothing else. (laughs) Eat me. Love it. Love it. But uh, that brings us to the main event. Christopher Daniels versus Doug Williams. 
I, I have a feeling you guys are big Doug Williams fans. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, half of the reason why I got into indie wrestling so much was because when they... Um, when a channel over here in the UK called the Wrestling Channel first started broadcasting, mm-hmm. one of the very first matches I saw was Doug Williams versus uh, American Dragon for FWA. And immediately I became a massive fan of Doug. Yeah. And then when I saw his success as he was moving on into uh, to Ring of Honor, I was like, oh, wow, this is like, for, for, for the first time in a very long time, one of the very first British independent wrestlers going over yeah. to America and actually breaking into America. Right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think he, he had a match with uh, Brian Danielson in Ring of Honor, I think, a few shows before this, too. So. Yeah, uh, I believe so, yeah. Great chemistry between those guys. and uh, Such good chemistry. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I've always said about uh, Doug Williams is that I, 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 I think there's a term for it. He, he's just kind of one of those people that you can just kind of count on to have a good match with whoever you yeah. partner him with. Yeah, yeah. Like a utility guy of sorts, you can pretty much yeah. just slot him in, you know, like singles, you can tag just pair team. him up with with anyone really. Because um, as I say to people, even though it's way down the road from this, um, the the small period of work between uh, Doug Williams and AJ and TNA, yeah, is so worth watching. Yeah, yeah. for sure. And I uh, I just recently watched. Uh, some pro- early progress shows where he had a match against Rampage Brown. Oh, um, so even at that point, what was it, 2014 or something? He was still mm-hmm. still on his game. Oh, absolutely, um, yeah. still on his game. And I, he just recently came out of retirement. Did yeah, he, not? he he recently uh, announced he was uh, coming out of retirement. That's so here was me fantastic. thinking I was there live for his last ever show. <laughs> no, it turns out no, he's 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 doing a Terry Funk, everybody. But you know what? I could not be any more happier. Right. <laughs> he he is the exact kind of guy that, that the UK defense scene could really use right now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he's yeah. just a guy who has name recognition but is also super, super reliable. And I mean again, like in in, in this match where i mean again it's, it's the main event but it's only what 14 minutes all in yeah it's not long at all yeah and uh, it's weird and they, they was, pack uh, a whole lot in they do I, I was very i was surprised that this was the the match they chose to close the show um mm. but given the dire stipulations of this match yeah <laughs> it made it all make sense i think so it's basically so he thought the last match had some good stipulations check out this if uh, if Daniels wins, Doug Williams can no longer shake hands with people in Ring of Honor. <gasps> I know, dun, I know, dun, dun. I know. Just take a seat. It's fine. Heresy. It's fine. We're all fine. If Doug Williams wins, then Christopher Daniels must always shake hands with his opponents. So uh, an exchange. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a lot. The outside the confines of Ring of Honor, this sounds insane. Right? <laughs> yeah, it sounds like a joke, <laughs> but it's it's actually a thing that's main eventing this this three hour show here. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it was a, a lot of methodical mat wrestling, as you would expect from Doug Williams. I always just watching him, you know, his transitions, the chain wrestling. It's all all great, and even Daniels at this point, he's still uh, relatively early in his career, but he was hanging with him. Uh, for sure. Oh yeah, uh, absolutely. You know, I I watched this in one sitting, so maybe it was just me. But uh, this match is kind of it, it. It struggled to catch my attention really for a lot of it. Uh, mm. Nothing wrong with it. It was just uh, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I, I kind of said it was a fa- uh, a fairly, I guess, by the books match. Yeah, there wasn't anything mm. that was like you know that was particularly crazy. It wasn't like they were going for crazy spots or anything um but it, it, it did pretty much everything it needed to they both got to showcase exactly what they're good at mm-hmm. um I, I i guess why they deserved to be main eventing as it were yeah yeah two mm. at this point even two big names um and kind of representing what ring of honor is trying to represent is that pure wrestling uh sport of it uh yeah. towards the end Doug Williams hits the beautiful chaos theory, rolling German suplex, but uh, too close to the ropes. So Daniels is able to grab the ropes and stop the pin. 
Again, uh, fantastic near four. Yeah, it's great yeah. You know, ring positioning. Just so, like, it looks easy, but it's not, like... Oh, no, uh, it's not at all, especially when you consider... <laughs> I mean, I guess, again, there's as well, it's, like, the whole mechanics of how the, the chaos theory works. Mm-hmm. But then, like, him deciding to do it, it's like, oh, well, I'm going to do it off the ropes because he won't let me go to the corner to do it, and then it puts him in close to the ropes, and you get a really, yeah. really good near fall out of it. And, again, as much as I have ragged on the prom- the production of this show, good camera work on that. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. One of one of their two cameras that they have. It's the guys going around with the tiny camcorders. <laughs> oh man, it gets a little Cloverfieldy sometimes. It's a little. Oh, it uh, does. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, a- after that, Daniels recovers, and he just uh, basically trips up Doug Williams, rolls him up, puts his feet on the ropes because he's a heel, and uh, gets the quick pinfall out of nowhere. Um, Daniels gets the win here. Therefore, Doug Williams can no longer shake hands with anybody in Ring of Honor. I guess he could use his feet to shake. Ah, there's the loophole. <laughs> so there you go. See? Fist bump, fist bump only. <laughs> Intertwined toes, that little deal. <laughs> um, so Daniels, after the match, is kind of mocking him. He's like, hey, he's demanding a handshake, basically, even though Doug can't. Which uh, prompts Jay Briscoe and... Dick Togo to come out. Hell yeah, Let's Dick go. Togo. <laughs> Dick to go. He's uh, on crutches, so uh, I guess that's why he wasn't uh, teaming with uh, Hikudo Adaka earlier. Well, yeah, so they they made the they made the point during this match that it was meant to, it was meant to be Doug Williams versus Dick Togo to fate to then face Christopher Daniels. I see. That's I, be- right. I believe. I, I that, believe that, that was right. the case. Um, um, but they're like, oh, Dick Togo, uh, uh, got injured and had to like, had to like step away. I think they said he was meant to be in a tag match as well at some point. I think that was meant to be the next show. Mm. They're like, oh, he can't do it anymore. And then all of a sudden Dick Togo appears. <laughs> Crowd pops for Dick. They, they love Dick Togo. Everyone um, loves Dick Togo. Yeah. You had to throw him out in some way or fashion. So this is the way, uh, Jay and Dick, run off the heels. Uh, Jay gives a, a J driller to Daniels, and uh, that's pretty much how the show closes. You know, Dick Daniels is down, he's out. Dick Togo and Jay Briscoe and Doug Williams. What a, what a cast of characters. Uh, <laughs> we need a sitcom <laughs> with those guys. Is not like <laughs> the other. But uh, yeah, and that's pretty much the show uh, closes, at least in ring. We get that segment, I believe I mentioned earlier, with... Uh, uh, little Guido and Tony Mama Luke. Yeah. It's basically like saying bye to each other. Like, you know, there's a sign of respect. They hug. Uh, Guido's like, hey, you got you, you got a lot of potential here. So keep moving on. And then they say they'll see each other down the road. And um, so that whole deal. And then after that, there's some little some shit with the prophecy. Who gives a fuck? Um, <laughs> <laughs> the evil. <laughs> uh, yeah. And the, uh, Steve Carino's there. Uh, he basically like it is basically where Samoa Joe he's like all right I'm off the clock and then he get, just leaves the prophecy and goes with Steve Carino so it's a fun little deal <laughs> there. Um, really shows that he's literally just there as like a hired assassin and there's you no want, like personal ties. Yo, if you want me here past five o'clock, then you got to pay my rate. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this hair doesn't bleach itself. All right. <laughs> um, but yes, that's uh, that brings us to the uh, the show to a close. Um, so all in all, you guys had the opportunity to watch it. What are your overall thoughts of Glory by Honor? All in all, it was a really solid event from the early days of of, of Ring of Honor. I mean, these were the events that that put their name on the map in terms yeah. of like, tape trading at that time. Uh, like, especially kind of feel like the Red Hadaka match was the one that everyone remembers oh, one, as well as Joe and Key. Um, and yeah, these were the ones that really could set the foundation to what would eventually end up having Ring of Honor be one of the best companies in America at that time, from yeah. like 2004 to 2007. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, I think in terms of what it means is it, because obviously it's always difficult doing the first kind of like version of a big show. Yeah. Because it's like how... You know, obviously, you need to make it seem important, but then you always kind of know, well, if we're going to be doing this each year, then 
you kind of have to set a standard. Right. But I, I think that I think this did pretty well. I, you know, again, you've got you've got those matches like uh, Red Hidaka, uh, Joe versus Key. Um, and, you know, there's thing, a lot of good things, stuff on this show. Things yeah. like things like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, even again, you know, uh, Mamaluke versus Mar- Maritato to kind of yeah. get people interested and, and really draw attention to the quality that the company has. Because right. I, feel, I feel like it's worth saying, this is all in all a pretty good showcase for Ring of Honor at the time. Yeah. Like, yeah, there are I some matches so too, yeah. that are pretty rough and the production is still pretty rough. But again, when you <laughs> consider the scale Ring of Honor was working on at the time and the kind of people that they had. Mm-hmm. Um. You know, there, 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 there's a, there's a lot of good to, there's a lot of good to come from it. Obviously, watching in retrospect changes a lot of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, especially like you said, in hindsight, you know, Samoa Joe. We all know he'd become you know a Mount Rushmore figure of Ring of Honor. Mm. Um, Homicide, the same thing. And like these guys are just in their early stages. Yeah, here. so it, it's like for me going back and watching it, and then hearing them talk about like, oh, uh, Homicide. You know, like fairly new to the business Samoa Joe was just like uh debuting in Ring of Honor and in my head I'm like yeah. huh <laughs> that doesn't seem right <laughs> right yeah but, um, it's, it's but like no it's crazy. There, there is genuinely um a lot to love in here especially if you're one of those people uh like I know not everyone's like me but I, I love going back and watching wrestlers early matches yeah yeah just to see how far they've come really and you know like i said you've got homicide you've got paul london brian kendrick in there samoa joe um and even to even to another biohazard get biohazard (laughs) the hit squad (laughs) of course yeah Um, who could forget and yeah even like christopher daniels so that again that if you if you fancy yourself a bit of a historian i feel like you do kind of owe it to yourself to watch this match but i still feel like as watch this event even um, but even still, that there's a lot to to really enjoy here. Yeah, I agree. And uh, this is like my sixth or seventh ROH show I've reviewed from 2002. And a lot of they're all three hours long, and some of them are a very long three hours. Yeah, some yeah. of them are like a oh wow, this is three hours, and then some of them like this, like oh okay, three hours wasn't that bad. Yeah, yeah. This one to me at least, it felt like an easy watch. Um, yeah. And it's funny, you know, it doesn't even have Brian Danielson on it. It doesn't have... I know. Uh, That's no, crazy. No AJ Styles, who was around at the time, too. Maybe they're wrestling in Japan or something. Um, I know that was a very common thing back then for people yeah, to like do a tour of been, Japan and come back. I know back. a couple other people at this time were doing stuff with, like, um, uh, a couple people were doing stuff with, like, Jersey All Pro. Um, yeah. Some were doing... Some were just doing stuff with, like, CZW as well at the time. Um, Actually, you know, I, I I have to check the timeline, but this could have been around the time where uh, Brian Danielson was facing John Cena on Velocity. Oh gosh, it that, might no, have that been. would have been 2003. Was it okay? I think so that was we're, 2003 we're that it was uh, John Cena versus Daniel Bryan on Velocity. Uh, I think I might be getting it wrong. <laughs> that's possible. Somewhere in there, it's crazy we're that close to that, but uh. <laughs> Yeah, that's 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 about all I got, guys. Yeah, once again, thank you for making the time to uh, to watch the show um, and to just yeah you know, recap a, a great time in, in Ring of Honor. They're, they're they're building stages at least. Oh no, it was an absolute joy to go back yeah, and watch I and mean, to be on the podcast as well. Yeah, I mean, I know, I mean, I I say I'm putting words into Sam's mouth, but when I said to him, "Hey, is early Ring of Honor okay by you?" he pretty much jumped at it. Hell yeah. yeah! I get to relive my teenage years. Hell yeah! <laughs> and so, and so for for me, I'm like a person who has who has watched it all, but like after the fact, <laughs> right? So, so for me, it's it, it's it's always fun revisiting it, and it's always fun for me just being there, and being like, oh, that's like homicide when he was like kind of getting his first big break and stuff like that. I I I love all that kind yeah. of stuff. Um, really fun to watch, yeah. And uh, you guys do a lot of that uh, independent more obscure type of stuff on your podcast uh, a great podcast i strongly suggest you guys uh, check it out where, where can everybody find you and listen to you do you want me to do it or do you want to do it sam uh, the, the floor is yours dan <laughs> uh yeah so if you haven't seen it from the title already and you chose not to read it then we are the sweet chinwag podcast <laughs> uh so you can find us on you can find us on twitter uh, at sweet chinwag uh on all pretty much all good uh podcast platforms uh 
Sweet Chain Wife podcast. Uh, we also have uh, our stuff available through Project Dips, uh, who also host our stuff as well. They uh, It goes up on live there uh, two days later than ours, so we normally post on Monday. Uh, it normally goes out there on a, on a Wednesday. And again, you can find them uh, on all good platforms, although we are in the process of getting our past episodes through on there. That's for later. We'll sort that out at another time. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, go check them out and go check out. Uh, I was lucky enough to uh, come on their podcast and talk some Lucha Underground, which is a Great show. banger of a time. It. Yes, so go check them out. Um, if you like what I do, you like what they do. Um, and yeah, that's all I got, guys. Thanks again for coming on. It is absolutely no, fine. I'm super happy being here and we'll probably end up popping by some other time. Oh, for sure. Once again, thank you to Dan and Sam from the Sweet Chinwag podcast. Super, super fun time with those guys. Go check out their podcast. Find them on Twitter at Sweet Chinwag. Listen to them wherever your heart desires. Available on all platforms. And yeah, man, these Ring of Honor shows, (laughs) there's a lot of fucking matches on these shows. And they're all three hours long. And it's just match after match after match. I mean, don't, don't get me wrong. It's a fun watch, but there's just a lot of content to talk about. So these episodes tend to run a little longer than my other uh, reviews, but still a fun time. Nonetheless, I appreciate you if you stuck through it the entire time. You the realist. That's all I got for you guys. Apronbump.com for all my episodes. If you like these Ring of Honor episodes and you just have a hankering for more Ring of Honor in 2002... Go to apronbump.com, click the episodes tab at the top, go to Ring of Honor, and that'll bring you to all of my Ring of Honor episodes that I've done. They're some of my favorite, um, ROH is one of my favorite companies to follow, especially in the golden years, um, which we are fast approaching. So go check that out if you haven't already. Subscribe for more reviews in the future. Uh, Next week, we have WCW. 1995 Super Brawl 5 specifically. So a little change in pace, some may say, from Ring of Honor. But um, that's the beauty of this podcast is that we get uh, such a variety and uh, something for everybody, hopefully. A buffet. Might be a shitty Chinese buffet with, you know, you know, like one of those Chinese buffets that also has like chicken tenders and stuff. That's kind of what this podcast is. But, you know. People like chicken tenders. I like chicken tenders. So um, what the hell am I talking about? I'm, I'm done here. So <laughs> thank you guys once again for listening. For lis- listening. I'm a f- f- I got I suck. Thank you guys once again for listening. Follow me on Twitter at Apron Bump, at Instagram, at Instagram. Do I even know what any of this? Do I even know how to do anything? Uh, whatever. Just stop listening. Why are you? Why are you even still here? The show's over. Uh, <laughs> Sometimes I just sit here and see how long people will listen to me. Uh, Thank you guys once again for listening. I love you all. I am hard. Talk around and disregard it. Should be walk the ground, show you what heart is. Standing strong and proud, nothing can like this. Let's get started. Sky, sky.